Thank you, Jeff and Wills, um, for, for having me here, and thank you, everyone, for attending. My name is Sammy Kumar. Uh, as Jeff sa stated, I'm uh, with Baker & Taylor. I am a, a enterprise sales manager for the U.S. Central Region. I work with libraries at a very high level um, with their entire workflow, um, and I'm really, really happy to be here today uh, to speak with y'all about um, some new diversity, equity, and inclusion analysis tools that um, Baker and Taylor has released. So uh, just a little bit about Baker and Taylor for those of you who don't know. Um, we've been a trusted partner for libraries, uh, providing books, digital content, and library-related technology for nearly 200 years in total. Um, our core mission is to help uh, libraries improve community outcomes through literacy and learning. We're also very, very proud of the fact that we are the only partner to libraries that can integrate in its uh, entire workflow. Um, from the selection, deselection, and acquisition uh, part of things to digital content and community engagement, technical service solutions, and then the data analytics and artificial uh, intelligence when it comes to your collection, which is what I want to talk to you a little bit more about today. Um, so why is it important to uh, analyze your collection for diversity, equity, and inclusion, or DEI, as I will refer to probably from here on out? Um, well, a lot of things came to the forefront during the pandemic, be it because of lockdown or isolation or quarantine. Um, and uh, it goes beyond just your collection and goes beyond just including issues around race, religious beliefs, sexual orientation, et cetera, which might be what comes to top of mind. First and foremost, when you hear the term DEI or diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, a few months ago, ALA, um, American Library Association, re released their State of Libraries for 2021. It was a special COVID-19 edition. And what they said within that report, if you don't have that report or haven't read that report, I strongly encourage you to do so, and I'm happy to send you a link to it. But it told us that, as always, communities are looking to libraries for information, and therefore libraries are constantly trying to fight disinformation. Um, I'll go with the same topic that my um, predecessor Lisa uh, used, um, which is, you know, vaccine and, and masks and information around vaccines. Libraries are constantly trying to fight uh, this information. So this type of information, diversity, equity, inclusion, all of that goes so much beyond um, just, you know, what we might, what might tend to come to mind initially. And it's, Beyond just the collection, if you're, a, if you're a manager, it's dealing with it within your employees or an organization. If you're an employee, it's dealing with it with management or your coworkers, or just a citizen of your community and dealing with it when it comes to your neighbors and not just dealing with it, but of course, more importantly, understanding it. So what this report told us is that there are inequities in collection development around the country and libraries are overrepresented in challenges and underrepresented on the shelves. So having a healthy diversity, equity and inclusive collection within your library is healthy for communities because it provides better understanding. And this was the motivation behind, behind Baker and Taylor to create the, the various DEI tools that I'm gonna talk about. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar with Collection HQ, it is the world's leading collection performance improvement solution. In a nutshell, Collection HQ allows a library to um, better assess and understand its existing collection. Because only from there, once you understand how your collection has performed presently and in the past, can you get a better grasp on how to move forward with collection development. So naturally, building this DEI analysis tool within uh, Collection HQ made all the sense in the world. So we delivered a module that's part of Collection HQ back in July. So all of our existing Collection HQ customers automatically gained access to this tool at no additional cost. And um, uh, it is designed to improve 
uh, the supply of diverse content and identify gaps to meet the needs of a library specific community. Um, it is available, as I said, within Collection HQ. It is also available as a one time or subscription DEI only. So for non Collection HQ customers, um, if you decide you just want to address the DEI piece of your collection, um, you can do that with this tool that we'll be releasing um, probably as soon as the end of this month or early next month. And again, that will be available as a one-time analysis or as a DEI-only subscription. So it's kind of a CHQ light, if you will. So <clears throat> um, this analysis tool, um, Sorry, this analysis tool provides um, uh, 12 diversity, equity, and inclusion categories. And we came, we, we, we arrived at these categories by working with librarians, publishers, and experts, including our own internal team um, from all around the country to come up with these tools. We use three data points um, to arrive at these topics. Um, and then when it came to assigning a specific title, um, a, a diversity topic, we used uh, BISAC, uh, our partners at Kirkus, and then our own internal Baker and Taylor collection development team. We are in the process of adding a fourth data point, which would be the Library of Congress subject headings. So stay tuned for that to be a fourth data point that's added into this. Uh, the DEI analysis can work for your library at a system-wide level or branch by branch or selected libraries. You know, some larger urban libraries uh, identify certain locations as regional branches. So maybe you want to do this at a regional level. Or maybe you want to do it um, at every branch level. Or if you're a smaller library, maybe you just want to do it um, at the, uh, you know, the, the system level. It's just as simple as checking a box to give you that fle flexibility um, as far as which libraries and, and branches you want to assess the collection. Uh, so once you make that selection, um, then you're ready to look at your overview and export it into Excel. And you quickly have a total number of diverse items within your collection based on the subject um, topics that we identified. Um, you also have uh, a total number of other items not identified as diverse. So you can get a quick percentage of, of diverse content within your entire collection. This also can include digital content such as eBooks and the audiobooks through Access 360, OverDrive and so forth. And it can even include your non-circulating um, items if you choose so, such as reference materials, if you're interested in seeing how that falls into um, various DEI categories. So once you've selected your branch, you then export to Excel, um, and that gives you a total circulation and turnover over rate of specific titles. Um, and this also gives you, I'm sorry, am I screen not moving or is it moving? Jeff, can you let me know? Because I think. Uh, Sammy, I can see that your mouse pointer is moving around. Uh, What's the slide that's currently up? It says diversity, equity, and inclusion. And it's got, oh, now it's gone to evaluate system wide. Okay, branch branch. I apologize, you all. Um, it was not moving along with my uh, clicker here. Okay, um, so apologies. Um, thank you, Jeff. Uh, so once you export, now you can look at your total circulation and turnover rates. And you can also, um, as you can see from this screenshot, uh, view which qualifiers were used to, I, to assign this title, that specific diversity topic or topics. Because as you can see, sometimes uh, a, uh, a title is, it more than one qualifier was used, of course, and uh, more than one topic was assigned based on those qualifiers. So if we go back into the um, uh, the 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 database, the product itself, this is where you can view your results and you can refine your results. Um, the headers are also a filter, so you can you know get a little more refined in terms of what you're trying to uh, examine. And also, this is where you have the ability to 
modify diversity topics. Uh, maybe a title was given more than one diversity topic and you don't agree, your staff does not agree with one or the other, you do have the ability to modify that internally for your own collection. So once you have done the piece of identifying your existing collection, then Baker and Taylor is also gonna be available to help you fill those gaps, if you will. And we do that with our exclusive work with uh, Kirkus um, our selection lists that are published on our, our specific diversity and inclusion selection list that we publish on Title Source 360. And of course, you'll always have access to the um, expert Baker and Taylor and Follett teams to help you with that a little further in terms of um, uh, identifying those gaps in, and, and, and building off of your existing collection. So the way I look at the DEI analysis is it's really a two part process. The first part we just talked about, that is identifying your existing collection and identifying what titles you might want to add to that to, to complement those or to improve upon that collection. The second part of it is though, is ensuring that your community and your patrons can actually easily identify and discover this content. And so that's where we go to our cataloging utility, which is BTCAT. BTCAT came out about uh, a year and a half ago, released it. It's a web-based cataloging, full cataloging utility and database. However, as we broke out the DEI analysis tool out of Collection HQ, we're also going to break out a very specific um, DEI tool for your cataloging records. Um, out of BTCAT. So we've created a turnkey retrospective mark record enhancement tool. We can run this, run this report for you as a one-time report, um, which will allow us to update subject um, headings for easier discovery within your catalog, insert biceps, uh, bisect uh, subject headings into your mark records, change some outdated um, Library of Congress subject headings, and add some of that diversity metadata into your subject headings that make them more easily discoverable. I think a good example and good to understand that the way we viewed diversity 10, 15, 20 years ago, even five years ago, might not be the way diversity is viewed or searched for today. So a good example is most people don't use the word illegal aliens anymore. We use undocumented immigrants. So. Uh, it's important to, to modify that metadata and we can do that for you in a very efficient way. BTCAT, this, this piece of BTCAT, again, is, is available as a one-time analysis. So we'll get, ask you to, to extract all of your records out of your catalog. We will run them through ourselves and we will, we will um, make sure we identify and correct the adequate subject headings for your diversity content only. You can do it as a DEI only subscription where on a quarterly basis, we will continue to help you to analyze that collection and new titles that have come in. Or you can subscribe to this as a utility only tool which gives you access to the full utility where you can create macros and utilize the pre-built um, uh, macros within the tool to work with all of your records uh, for your entire collection and not just the DEI. So as a whole, um, what we're looking to help libraries do here is of course, analyze your existing collection, identify gaps within those collections, provide you with custom selection lists to help fill those gaps. And then from the metadata and cataloging standpoint and workflow, address some of those new collection codes or uh, subject headings and help you to easily modify that within your existing collection. Then, of course, moving forward, um, Collection HQ and BTCAT can help you track the performance of those diverse titles so that you, you ensure that the work that you've done and that you've put in is making an impact um, and that, the, um, uh, that those titles are being more easily found uh, within your collection. Um, I realized that this was a lot of information. I had tried to stay uh, as high level as I could, 
Um, but please feel free to um, take down my information, reach out to me by phone or by email or through wills. I I'd love to have a, a more deeper dive conversation with you and your library about this. Um, but uh, thank you so much for your time and thanks to, to Wills for allowing me to be here. Thank you, Sammy. Um, I, you know, I think we, we had one question come in um, and I think we can probably take just a minute uh, okay. to, to uh, pass it on to you. Um, it says here, um, sorry if I missed this, but can you talk about what the process is for getting the collection input for analysis for libraries that aren't participating in Collection HQ already? Is that something you think you can answer or should we maybe- No, try I'd to love to answer, answer that. Yeah, okay. so if I understand, um, uh, let me just stop sharing my screen here. If I understand the collection. So the process is essentially the big piece of what the library would have to do. It, again, it depends on if you are doing this as a one time or if you decide to do the subscription of the DEI. Because again, we did break this out into it's going to be available as a standalone subscription. So if that's the case, then you simply would have access to the DEI tools only, and um, there would be an API into your um, catalog and you would extract that information and the tool would, would analyze and assign those titles that are DEI and then you could do your work and do your analysis within those titles that have been design, assigned uh, or determined as DEI content. If you're just doing the one time, um, then we would take a data extraction from your um, catalog that you would provide, and then we would um, perform the analysis and you would have, we would give you access to a dashboard that you would have um, access to for a three month period so that you can make sure that you've um, looked at everything and gathered all the pertinent data that you need um, and give yourself plenty of time to perform that gap analysis that you might want to perform based on that information. So um, either way, you're going to have to do some data as extraction, but if you're a DEI analysis subscription customer, that would be more of an automated process. If it's a one-time, then we would require you to provide us with a data extraction from your catalog. And I hope that answered your question. And again, if not, I'd be happy to take this offline, not to eat up into the next presenter's time too much. Thank you, Sammy. That, You're welcome. Uh, without knowing too much of the technical details, it sounded sounded right to me. Great. <laughs> so right. that's great. Thanks for doing that. Yeah.